In this video, we're going to show you how to install the ChargePoint CT4000 family of electric vehicle charging stations. We recommend that a ChargePoint O&M partner performs site validation. You can contact ChargePoint for site validation inquiries. Before we begin the installation, we first have to take the online training course to become a ChargePoint certified installer and sign up for a ChargePoint account. If you do not complete this training, you'll be unable to complete the installation process and ChargePoint will not take this product in warranty. Ensure the appropriate wiring, circuit protection, and metering is in place at the installation location by reviewing the specifications, wiring diagrams, and grounding requirements described in the installation guide. For bollard mount charging stations, prepare the installation site by following the instructions in Appendix A. The mounting template for the bollard is stapled into the center fold of the installation guide. Ensure that adequate CDMA, Verizon or Sprint, or GSM, AT&T, Rogers, cellular coverage is available at the installation location. To ensure adequate signal strength in underground garages or other enclosed parking structures, cellular repeaters may be required. And finally, review the charging station's data sheet and read the entire installation guide so that you can follow each step exactly. There are two ways to mount the CT4000 series, on a wall or on a pedestal that has been mounted on a concrete pad or existing concrete. We'll also need to make sure that the charging plug can reach car's charging ports without effort or strain. The charging cables can reach up to 14 feet. We'll need some tools and materials to complete the installation. Some are included with the CT4000 and others you'll need to supply. See the installation guide for a complete list and be sure to have everything you need for either bollard or wall mounting your station model. We'll start by showing you how to mount the CT4000 on its bollard. The first step is to check the two bollard boxes to make sure we have all of the correct contents. The main body box contains the main body, pre-assembled with the mounting pole base plate and rubber bumper, an adapter plastic cap, and four quarter inch 20 screws. The cable management box contains the retractor assembly with pre-installed EV charging only sign and two sets of cable clamps. Next, we'll use a 3 8 inch socket wrench to loosen but not remove the two screws holding the pole inside the main body. Then we can remove and discard the cardboard shipping spacers and extract the pole base plate assembly from the main body by pulling it out from the bottom of the main body. Keep the rubber spacer in place over the pole. Now with the bollard next to the installation site, we'll pull the wires through the conduit. We place the pole base assembly over the conduit, making sure the long curved edge of the base plate is positioned where the front of the charging station should be. Then we'll adjust the lower nuts as necessary so that the mounting pole is level. Once it's level, we can tighten the nuts on the top of the base plate to at least 1416 inch pounds or 160 nanometers. Let's check again that the pole base plate is level and adjust the nuts underneath the base plate if needed. We'll position the level at various locations on the pole above each bolt. We'll align the notches on the rubber spacer with the front mounting nuts and then slide it all the way down the pole until it's flush with the base plate. This will prevent any rocking motion between the main body and the base plate. Next, we'll slide the body over the mounting pole, taking care to guide the wires through the pole without pinching them. And retighten the two screws we loosened in step two to about 80 inch pounds using a 3 8 inch or 10 millimeter socket or box wrench. We need to make sure the body is firmly aligned to the bottom surface and that no movement or rocking can take place even with significant pressure. We won't use any sealant like caulking or silicone to seal the bollard to the concrete pad. The bollard is designed to shed moisture between its bottom surface and the concrete pad. To get started on the cable retractor, we'll first position it so that the bottom of the retractor is near the base of the bollard. We won't unwrap the ropes. We'll remove and discard the two 3 8 inch drive shipping screws from the front face of the retractor. Once these screws are removed, the counterweights are free to move in either direction, so we won't tilt or carry the retractor assembly with the top end lower than the bottom. If we need to remove or replace the EV parking sign, this is when we would want to do that. Now we can install the retractor onto the bollard. First, we insert the black cap into the space at the top of the main body. With a Phillips screwdriver and at least one of the four quarter inch 20 by one and a quarter screws in hand, we'll position the retractor against the back of the main body. 
place the slot at the bottom of the retractor over the knob at the bottom of the main body. We'll hold the retractor in place until we have at least one screw tightened. From inside the main body, we insert the quarter inch by 20 by one and a quarter inch screws through the main body and the retractor and tighten to 60 inch pounds or seven nanometers. The second way we can mount the CT4000 family of chargers is on a wall. The included parts for wall mounting are different than for the bollard mount, so let's make sure we have all of the correct contents. The main body box contains the pre-assembled main body, two sets of mounting brackets with pre-installed quarter 20 screws, and 3 8 by 16 and 3 quarter inch flange bolts. The packing box for these brackets serves as a template for drilling mounting holes, so we won't discard this packaging until we have finished the next step. And two slot covers, one is a spare. The cable management kit includes the retractor assembly with a pre-installed EV charging only sign and two sets of cable clamps. To use the packing box for the brackets as a template for drilling the wall holes, we tear the packing box along the perforation to allow it to lay flat and place the template against the wall. As described on the packing insert, we'll align the top to 49 inches above the floor or ground. We'll need to make sure that the template is level and the side of the packaging insert is plumb. Now mark the four mounting holes. Drill four holes in the wall at the marked locations. Check the installation guide for specifications for the 3 8 inch fasteners and 5 16 inch holes for various wall types. Next, we'll mount the rear brackets to the wall. We separate the pre-assembled front and rear brackets by loosening but not removing the pre-installed screws. Leave about 3 quarters inch or 19 millimeters embedded. And then mount each rear bracket to the wall using screws appropriate for the type of wall material. To get started on the cable retractor, we'll remove and discard the two 3 8 inch drive shipping screws from the front face of the retractor. Once these screws are removed, the counterweights are free to move in either direction, so don't tilt or carry the retractor assembly with the top end lower than the bottom. If we need to remove or replace the EV parking sign, this is the time to do it. Now we'll place the top front bracket over the two screws of the top rear bracket. We'll need to steady the retractor with one hand while using the other hand to position the bracket. And we repeat the same process for the bottom bracket. Now we'll tighten all four screws to 60 inch pounds or seven nanometers using the Phillips screwdriver. And finally, we'll insert the slot cover bottom first into the slot at the bottom of the retractor. To mount the main body, we first need to remove the 3 8 16 by 3 quarter inch flange bolts from the rear brackets and hold on to them. Next, we position the main body so that the top hole aligns with the top retractor bracket. Reinsert a flange bolt into the top hole and finger tighten. To mount the second flange bolt, expose the pre-drilled hole location below the terminal block. We push the tab on the terminal block to release the cover plate, then slide the cover plate upwards until it stays in position, and reinsert the other flange bolt into the lower mounting hole. Now we can tighten both flange bolts to 50 inch pounds, or 117 nanometers. The CT4000 body has two conduit knockouts, one inch and three quarter inch, or 25 and 19 millimeter. We can use a flat screwdriver to remove the knockout for the conduit size we're using. And finally, we can connect the conduit and feed the wiring to the main body. Wiring is the same for the bollard or wall mount. Be sure to check all warnings in the install guide prior to wiring the station. To power a dual port station using a single 40 amp circuit, use the power share option provided in the power management kit. Instead of following the upcoming instructions, see Appendix B of the install guide to properly install power share jumpers and relabel the station. If you're not installing a power sharing kit, connect the wiring as follows. First, we'll strip all five wires, one half inch. We push the black tab on the terminal block to release the cover, then slide it up till it locks. Then lift the middle white lever marked ground on the terminal block. Insert the ground wire and lock the lever down until it clicks. Next, we insert the pairs of L1 and L2 wires and lock them down. Now we can turn the power on at the breaker. 
using a solenoid type voltage tester, will check that the voltages at the station's terminal block are 208 240 volts between the L1 and L2 legs and 120 volts between the ground and each leg. If the voltages aren't as expected, make sure the wiring has been properly connected. Now we can turn power to the station off. The mounts are installed and the terminals wired, so let's install the head and top cap. To complete this step, we'll need a smartphone with a camera and internet connection, a charge point login, wire stripper, and number two Phillips screwdriver. The top cap box contains the top cap, the installation guide, and some Phillips screws. If you're installing both bollard and wall mount stations, we'll need to pay attention to the cap's shape. The back of the bollard stations is rounded, and the back of the wall mount station is flat. The head assembly box contains the head assembly, four rubber plugs, two are spares, an L wrench that's attached to the side of the head assembly, and a spare activation label. The other is already attached to the head assembly. Keep the spare handy for future reference. Gateway stations also include a network enablement kit with a SIM card and installation instructions. Let's get the head assembly ready for mounting. First, we'll stand the head upright on its foam packaging. If we're installing a gateway station, we remove the SIM card from its carrier, lift the rubber flap on the left side of the head assembly, and insert the notched edge of the card into the slot with the notch facing upward until it fully clicks into place. We can use the card's carrier to push it in. Next, we can install the top cap. There are two types of top caps you may encounter. The snap type, where the back of the top cap has levered snaps, and the screw type, where there are deep bosses for screws. For the snap type, place the top cap over the head assembly and push down carefully. Then use a screwdriver to deflect the tabs over the pins on each side and continue to push down until the snaps are fully seated. Repeat this for the rear snaps. For the screw type, instead of snaps in the rear, we secure it with two supplied screws, tightening to 20 inch pounds or 2.3 nanometers. With the yellow band and foam removed, we can slide the head assembly onto the main body until it's stopped by the security tag on the side of the head. Then break off the L wrench so it doesn't get trapped between the body and head. Don't insert the charging connectors into the holster until the station is powered or they'll permanently lock. Now we can connect the blue connector to the blue receptacle near the terminal block. Let's make sure it clicks into place and is well seated. Then we pull the terminal block cover down. Next, we lift the head assembly slightly to remove the wrench and lower the top cap and head until they're fully seated and engaged. It may take some extra downward pressure. Let's power up the station and run through the installation wizard to complete the configuration of our station. The wizard will walk us through step by step, configuring language, enabling power sharing and installing jumpers, power selection, labeling, fault checks, holster lock testing, cable clamp installation, pinpointing on a map, and testing network connectivity. We'll complete each task and click continue to move on to the next. Now that the station is working as expected, we can use the L wrench to tighten the two security screws located inside the holsters to about 25 to 30 inch pounds, or 2.8 to 3.4 nanometers. Then cover the screws using the two rubber plugs. To assemble the cables, let's pull down a few feet of rope and tie a slip knot to make it easier to connect them. Then we unwrap the cable, stretching it out to remove any twists or kinks. Snap the cable clamps onto the cables. Remove the packing material from the connectors. And finally, we insert the charging connectors into their holsters. The last thing you need to do is complete the post-installation checklist found in the installation guide. We place the activation sticker on the back, and on the front, we'll certify that the station is properly installed and configured, and will record important information for the activation process. Once it's complete, tear out this page and give it to the person responsible for activating the station. Congratulations, we've just installed a ChargePoint electric vehicle charging station. All that's left is to activate the station on the ChargePoint network so drivers can find and use it. For more information about the installation process, including preparing the site, maintenance and troubleshooting, 
Please see the CT4000 installation guide on ChargePoint.com. We hope you found this video to be helpful and informative. Please help us improve this series by sending comments and suggestions to training at chargepoint.com.